iRacing have just added the brand new Mercedes F1 2021 car to their game. This is absolutely huge news. Previously, iRacing's most modern F1 car was the 2015 McLaren, which was not a good year for them, so it wasn't a particularly quick car uh, by F1 standards. But this is one of the best cars in the 2021 season. It's also bang up to date, and I'm really, really excited to try it. Of course, I do normally play the F1, the officially licensed F1 2021 game. Uh, that's sort of my main racing game, but iRacing is my second favorite racing game. I love iRacing as a sim, so I'm really excited that we've got a modern car and a directly comparable car to the official F1 game. So in this video, I'm going to be comparing the two. But first of all, the very first laps in the Mercedes F1 2021 car in iRacing. Right, should we do it then, guys? Let's get on track in this Mercedes F1 car. Already feels pretty good straight out of the pits. It's got a lot of grip already. Oh, it's got a lot of grip. Right. Now, we've got no deploy on it. Wow, we've got no deploy on at the moment, guys. We're not even deploying any ERS at the moment. And it already feels fast enough. Quite early shifts, it feels like. I switch it up to balance deployment. So you see on the steering wheel there, we've got the battery percentage as a number. This feels so planted. Oh my God. This has got unbelievable amounts of grip. The sound I don't think is actually that great on board, to be honest. I think it sounds pretty good off board though. We'll do some off board shots in a bit. Oh my God, that's virtually flat. That is so much more downforce than anything iRacing has ever made before. This bit flat? Yeah, easy. Easy flat. Oh my god, this thing is an absolute animal. This is also the most competitive F1 car that they've ever put in. Previous two modern ones were the 2009 Williams, which was not a competitive car, and the 2015 McLaren, which was really not a competitive car. So far, the hybrid system seems to be doing its thing quite nicely. This has got a lot of grip, this thing. So much grip and so much... I could just keep the throttle planted. There, the McLaren was struggling a little bit. Now, turn one's going to be easy flat, surely. Yeah, so planted. This is how I imagine a, down, a, he, a high downforce car feels like in real life. Just planted. And yeah, okay, once you start pushing the limits, it's going to start to move around a bit. But this is how... The world champion car should feel planted. It's not going anywhere. The McLaren was all over the place. I was often spinning in fifth gear in the McLaren. This thing though, I've not even had a moment yet. And I know I'm not pushing it that much, but it's got so much grip. Oh my God, what a car. I quite like the hybrid system so far. Can we keep this flat? That's flat, just. That's completely flat. Nuts. Nuts. There's something special about this, this sense of speed in iRacing. I don't just mean a straight, you know, speed blur and motion blur and that kind of thing. There's something special. I couldn't put my finger on it yesterday. There's something special about sense of speed in iRacing. It just, it, it makes it, it, you really feel like you're going around this circuit really quickly. Because could, could you even imagine doing this in real life? It would, it would. It would blow you away, and I'd be able to do nothing, nowhere near as quick as this in real life, to be clear. But it would absolutely blow you away to be able to do anything like this sort of speed in real life. There's no way. And iRacing seems to get that feel. Not, not as much as real life, obviously, but more so than the F1 game. The F1 game, for some reason, it just doesn't get that feel of speed quite right. This, though, I'm going to use this car a lot. This feels phenomenal. It's got a lot of traction as well. I was only lost in the rear end a little bit there because I was being quite heavy with the throttle. In fact, let's get the throttle overlay up, shall we? So you guys can see what I'm doing with the pedals. There we go, bottom left. 
So they were to be quite aggressive with the petal. They are full throttle quite early. Look how aggressive they've been with that throttle. Progressive, they're just stomping on it because I can. Now I'm going to try and keep it absolutely flat for here again. This Apex a little bit had to turn out a little bit, but completely flat as you can see. Already in the mid 30s. Now, in the, in, the, in the video that iRacing released yesterday... Oh, my God. There's so much downfalls. In the video that iRacing released yesterday, they were able to do a 29.5. And I was surprised because that was only about two seconds uh, quicker than what I could do in the McLaren. And it looked like a reasonable lap, but I could definitely do way quicker. I'm already in the mid-30s on race fuel, race ERS deployment, and on very early laps. So without further ado then, let's finally see the two games side by side. We've got F1 2021, the officially licensed game on the left. And then we've got iRacing with the brand new Mercedes F1 2021 car on the right. And uh, yeah, I've seen these laps up across the start finish line, both from cockpit view. Um, I'm really going to concentrate on the handling differences between the games more than the kind of graphical because there's going to be a million other differences so really we're just concentrating on the handling here as I said perfectly synced up as we cross the start finish line both from cockpit view I don't normally use cockpit view for F1 and you've also got the, the uh, front and brake overlay in the bottom left to give you an idea of what's going on so far pretty similar laps actually and I will say you know I've done a lot of hours I've probably done I don't know four hours or so of, of the Mercedes F1 car before jumping back onto F1 2021 also the cockpit cam for the first time the key things that hit me were F1 2021 turns in a lot more keenly. It just... I run a default setup, by the way, on F1. And, and it just it just turns in. It, it's really, really keen to turn in. It flicks in really easy. And that gives it the feel that it's got a lot of grip. But actually, when you get into the corner, there's less grip. Now, look at this next corner. Completely flat on iRacing. No problem. Big lift, really, on a default setup on F1 2021. You can take it flat with the setup. Better one on the right hand side of my racing, I'm using iRacing's default Silverstone setup as well. So there's definitely overall less grip. As you can see, the iRacing's now really starting to pull away. Magnus and Beckett's complex, I really lose a lot of time on the F1 game. A couple of key differences. First of all, it turns in a lot more keenly keen on the F1 2021 game. There's less grip when it actually settles down. It, it almost feels like there's less downforce and it understeers a lot more on the exit. Other than that, that, they're more similar than what I recall, to be fair, jumping from directly from one to the other. The straight line speed looks fairly similar. Um, the slower speed corners look fairly similar. It does feel a little bit better on iRacing, but actually overall quite similar now on slower speed corners. And so there's a lap time difference then, almost two seconds quicker on iRacing. Now, obviously, iRacing have releases at the end of the season. Codemasters released their game, well, in the middle of the season, but they would have, they would have taken, you know, performance sort of from near the start of the season. I wonder if the difference with that is that, you know, I don't, obviously Mercedes haven't added two seconds onto the lap times of their cars. But one thing I will say is that the lap time, the pole position time for the real life British Grand Prix, which by the way was a sprint race weekend, so uh, they only had one practice session beforehand, was a 26 1. We've done a 25 8 in, in, in our racing. Yes, that's quicker. But again, I imagine if they, Mercedes now went back to Silverstone, they could probably do, I, I mean, I'm guessing, but I would say at least a mid 25. Judging on, you know, how much time they game over the season and also then having now learned more about Silverstone, having done the whole race weekend there, having learned more about the car as well. So I would say iRacing probably gets it more right. I mean, we're easily flat through through cops. On F1 with a default setup, we're not. Obviously, F1's a bit more mainstream. iRacing is very much a sim, but this car is not difficult to drive. To be absolutely clear about that, it's not a difficult car to drive. If you turn on traction control and ABS, I reckon anyone could drive this car. I really do. F1... Nothing really happens with the car. It's a lot simpler to drive. Although you can get it sideways, and certainly with a setup, you really get, get, get some rotation. But one thing that really struck me, two things actually really struck me. First of all, when you're doing a setup, I don't know about iRacing setups, when you're doing a setup for the F1 game, what you do is you create as much rotation as possible within reason, and then lower the wings as much as you can to still get the, the right amount of speed. In iRacing, I'm not feeling a need to create rotation. The car doesn't inherently understeer. It, it, it's weird. It, it, there's obviously a limit, and it's not oversteery. Through Cops is a great example. It's not oversteery. Or through Backers and Beckets, it's not oversteery, but it doesn't feel understeery. It just feels like it goes around the corner really, really nicely. And I'm sure top esports guys will be making the car uh, rotate a lot more through the corners. But in F1, the top setups are all about just adding rotation. Just make it rotate, make it rotate. So I think in the F1 game, for some reason, the car under rotates. And that's what setups are all about. One final key thought of the difference between the games iRacing feels a lot more special than the F1 game. And what came to mind when I was driving the iRacing car was Martin Brundle. 
Martin Brundle, of course, the Sky, uh, the Sky Sports uh, co-commentator, he often gets to drive these cars. He's a very lucky man. Of course, XF1 driver himself, multiple race winner. But uh, he gets to drive these cars himself um, sometimes. And he always says, he always comes back and says, that's amazing. He's always, even though he's an XF1 driver, he's always amazed at how much power and grip these things have got. He, he, he always can't fathom the words at how incredible these cars are. Even when he drove it in the wet, he said, even in the wet, it just feels like nothing else in the world. And bear in mind, he's driven Le Mans recently as well. I can't recall if it was a GT or, or a prototype car he drove, but it's not like he, you know, he only ever drives a little Persia at home or something. So that's what, you know, and, and then that gets across the point of the F1 special. These cars are amazing. They're the pinnacle. The F1 game doesn't feel special. I'm not sure what it is. There's something about it. It just doesn't feel... Like you're driving a special F1 car. Now, you know, I've probably got, I don't know, 200 hours in the game now. That could be it, of course. But I don't know. It, it, it just feels like you can very quickly get to, certainly not the limit. I'm still a second lap off the esports pace. But you can very quickly get to what you feel like is the limit. And, and, and you know, and, and then from there, you're sort of understeering. And iRacing, you really, really have to build up to it. And that would be exactly the same in real life. No F1 driver, even current F1 driver, after, after a bit of time off at least, um, and, and no previous, you know, let's say you put Jensen Button back in a Mercedes F1 car. He's not going to be going max speed of the car on lap one. There's no way. He will have to build up to it. These cars are insane and they're special and they're the fastest cars in the world. And iRacing nails that feel. It feels like you're driving something special. It feels like it's got so much grip and so much power. The F1 game, I don't know what it is. I honestly think it turns into King Lee. And then it understeers when it gets there. And that might, that, and that might be it. That might be it. It just doesn't rotate. It just doesn't turn right. I, honestly, it's really hard for me to put fingers on it. And I implore you, if you've got any kind of sim racing setup, a wheel, anything, give iRacing a go. It's not cheap, but you need to drive this car. It's something really, really special. Anyway, let's have a quick look at some off-board shots side by side. Well, not side by side, but comparing uh, F1 to iRacing. Uh, and then we're going to get into a race. Now, we couldn't do a video about the brand new F1 2021 Mercedes car in iRacing without doing a race. It's got to be done. It's week 13. It's, it's, the, it's the unofficial week where nobody cares about anything. We have to do a race in the car. But just before we do that, I want to talk you through exactly what you're seeing on the wheel in front of you. So hopefully you can enjoy the race a little bit more because you can see a bit more detail of exactly what's going on to the car. And then we'll get straight into the race. So here's all the information that it's displaying to us in the wheel of the Mercedes F1 car. And this just shows the attention to detail that iRacing have gone to in recreating this car, not only in terms of handling, but also in terms of the detail on the wheel. So along the top there you've got Deploy 4, that seems to be locked to Deploy 4, I think that's just a static thing. You've got the numbers along the top there, interestingly that's gear sync numbers as far as I can work out. So if I leave the pits here, there you go, so first once you do reasonable revs in each gear, it goes green. There you go. Green, green, green. So that's actually, a, that's actually, oh God. That's actually a gear syncing system. I don't 
think it does anything in the actual game, but presumably that's how it works in real life. You get the gears synced uh, when you first got the pits, and you've got to get all of them synced, and then that will then just go away. Top right, you've obviously got the lapped, uh, the lap meter. Uh, then you've obviously got the gears there in the middle, the nice big number, that's obvious. The three attack mode, there is multiple different uh, ERS deployment modes you can use in this car. Number one is no dull, no deploy. Number two is qualifying mode, so that will use the entire charge of the battery over one lap. Number three is attack mode, that will, that's a race mode, but it will drain the battery actually pretty quickly it only takes maybe two laps or so to drain the battery so that's actually quite an aggressive mode as well you've got balance mode which sort of keeps the battery charge roughly where it is and you've got uh, build mode which which will let the battery recharge so those last three are race modes now interestingly there is no overtake button in the mercedes f1 car in in iRacing now that's because um it's a sim and they don't want people getting too sweaty with it um, that's also why you can only change the the hybrid mode so often per laps once we leave the garage once we leave the pit lane i believe it's something like two times per lap it might be a tiny bit more than that but you can't change the ers deployment modes very often per lap again to stop people going in attack mode when they want to and then go back to build mode and just playing with it or even switch it off is to stop people playing with it too much which actually i like it makes it a lot more approachable for the average racer someone like me that it isn't going to want to learn the exact right deployment modes so realistically you leave it on balance for most of the racing sometimes you use attack or build depending on what's going on but for the most part you do just leave it where it is below that you've got the battery that is just a, a number that represents the percentage charge in the batteries so that will fluctuate throughout the lap Top right then you get, you got the 57.0, that's the brake balance, so you can adjust that. Uh, the LL, I'm not, I think that might be litres per lap of fuel, I'm not 100% on that one. Tar is the actually, I believe that's the target lap time, which I've not found a way to set it yet, and again, that's probably something that's done in real life. And the bottom right is, of course, your last lap time. In addition to that, you've also got a whole nother page. This gives you live readouts of tyre temperatures, which is really handy in iRacing. As far as I'm aware, no other car has got live tyre temperature readouts. I'm sure you let me know down in the comments if there's one that I've missed, but um, certainly most cars, you can't get live temperature readout. In iRacing, the only way you can get a temperature readout is if you come back to the pits and take the tyres off the car. Uh, so it's awesome to have some live readouts there. That's of course, they do also have that in real life, which is why it's on the car. Um, you've also got the speed on top there. You've still got the gear sync thing displaying. Batteries in the middle there. The, the ERS mode, oh, wrong button. The ERS, ERS mode is still in the middle there. Um, Delta, that gives you the temperature for the water as well. Twatter, amazing. But temperature for the water there. So that'll obviously heat up if you rev the engine a bit. There you go, it's, it's heating up now. And again, on the right side, you've just got the brake balance once again. Now, interestingly, to add to the uh, sense of immersion here, so obviously you, let's go back to the default race page. Obviously you can change the brake balance. Now, do you recognize that? I do. I recognize that from seeing onboard laps from Mercedes. This is exactly how it looks in real life. That's changing the brake balance there. Uh, you can also change the brake balance just by point one. That, that's called brake balance fine tuning. Uh, the brake migration level as well. I don't really understand what brake migration is yet. I'm not going to lie, but you can change that. Now, interestingly, they've got brake magic. Now, if I go, uh, there, isn't actually, there isn't actually a thing that shows you whether brake magic is on or not. But you can see the 5775. You can set how more forward it goes. But I'll very briefly explain it for those that don't know. It, it came to fruition in Baku when Lewis Hamilton went straight on. Basically, brake magic you, uh, moves most of the braking force to the front wheels. So you can keep the front tyres warmer on formation laps and safety car laps. So they've actually even added brake magic into this car, which is unbelievable. That is not in the official F1 game at all. So it's awesome to see brake magic being integrated there. Um, other than that, you've got the usual diff settings and you can change the amount of engine braking you've got and stuff, but that's all kind of fairly standard stuff. It is a sim after all. Uh, and of course, yeah, we, we have got our, our, our two screens that we can display there. I think that's about it for the attention detail in terms of what's on the wheel. Uh, but this car in general has just got some insane tension detail. The whole thing is just feels exactly like it is in real life. Right, come on then, guys. A race in the Mercedes F1 car. I don't know how to start this car. This could be interesting. I suspect you could do with a clutch paddle. But I've not got one at the moment. Here we go. Green flag, green flag. That guy got an absolute flyer. Car on your left, go right, right side, you're in the middle. There was a bit of contact there. I tried to avoid him, but barely, barely managed it. We are in attack your ESMO for now. Let's leave it there for, for a minute, just while we get down this straight, and then we'll turn it down after that. I don't think there's any damage. It was only a small hit. Let's go send it if he wants to. Whoa, bit of contact ahead. That was silly. I don't want to have a crash, guys. Uh, so he's just hit me as well. In balance fuel mode now. Oh, 
I, want to, I just want to get to the end of this race. Balance here. I suppose Carl Hyde's gone very wide there. Nicolaj, I recognise it. I do vaguely recognise his name. He's going to quick, I think. I'm more or less going to let him go. Bit of contact there, unfortunately. Couldn't really avoid it. It wasn't big contact again, though. We have actually overall game positions there, I think. That was scary. I'm amazed we all missed him. <laughs> that was nuts. I think P9, P10, uh, top 10 is my target, I think, in this race. We pretty much flat through there still, which is nuts. The yeah, should be enabled from now, I think. Is this lap three? It is lap three. I think I'm a bit quick in this guy. I need to get past him. Uh, I'm not going to go up to attack ERS just yet. I'm going to go to attack ERS mode just to make it nice and easy. The DRS enabled now, though. Nice, easy overtake. Let's go. Interesting. I haven't quite a chunk faster than him, you know. I'm up to P8 on legit pace. How my tyre temps getting on? They are 120 us on the warmer side, but they're not deathly warm. Loads and loads of grip. I'm loving this, man. This is so good. Oh, someone's off. Sandy Mitchell. I don't know if he's just retired or what. That's us up to P7. No, P6. I think we're up to P6 now, guys. Do we dare to dream of the top positions? Oh, someone's just gone off again there. Oh, he's limping. What's going on with him? He's got, he must have got a yield. We're up to P5 now, guys, I believe. Yeah, we are. We're in P5. P5, dude. I will absolutely take a P5. Oh, that is pretty much flat. Look at the lift. It's sort of a triangular lift. We can keep it up the wall. Maybe we can get a top five. That'll be a real result in this lobby. So I think through those sort of corners. Oh, hello. That's someone else for position. What's happened to him? We're up to P4, guys. Uh oh. Just missed my breaking point. There isn't any, there isn't any breaking boards annoying me into that. Then Elo's just got past Redecky behind. But they're going to still be battling. Let's just try and run away here. I don't think we can do anything about the cars ahead, unfortunately. They're just too quick. 44.7 for us last lap. Half a second off where we were, but the tyres are warm up. No DRS or anything like that, of course, as well. That is our pace, I think. Into the 44s is our pace. We're a second, <laughs> second lap slow in the cars, the cars ahead, all of them. So it's the cars behind us. We need to worry about three tenths slow and De Nino that last lap. Let's keep an eye on that. So the tyres, the, the, the look, the sheen of the surface also wears. See on the right-hand side there, it looks quite matte. That's a new thing, this, this build. The tyres do sort of uh, fade as they get more worn. What's the cars behind then? 44-4 for Radecki. That last lap, that's quick. He's coming for me. Danilo was a bit slow. That's because they were battling. Yeah, okay, I'm going to start turning the wick from now. We're going to go to attack ERS mode, which is deploy a little bit more. He's, he's going to get a DRS soon. He did a 43 lap that. We can't do a 43. I don't know if he's on hards or what. Ooh. It wasn't illegal. Though he's on hards or what, but he's quick at the moment. He's second quicker than me last lap. Let's go up to attack ERS mode. It'll burn a bit of battery here, but we want to try and keep him out of DRS for as long as we can. Kai's starting to move around a little bit now. Now these tyres are getting a bit second hand. Back up to two seconds. That was a good lap. Attack ERS mode helped us a lot. 0.4 that lap. And he's gone a lot slower than that lap. I wonder if he did use his ERS the lap before. Yeah, he's done a 0.7 that last lap. We actually pulled the gap out that lap. But now we're going to have to go back down to balance ERS mode ourselves. So we don't run out of charge by the end. This is a prop battle for P4, this. I think he's going to get us, so he's just too quick. He's now getting within a second now. He's going to start to get some dirty air, of course. I don't know how strong that is in this car. I've not spent long in dirty air. He's not lost much through there. He is in attack ERS mode now, I'm pretty sure. We've lost a lot of time this, this lap by turning our ERS mode down. No. I just had to be aggressive on the power. He's getting DRS down here. 
Can we avoid it in the next turn though? One more turn to go. Pretty good through there. He's outside a second. He's not going to get DRS on us. Down this next straight. This is the crucial one. Okay, I reckon we then go back up to recharge ERS mode. And hope he can't get us, or at least balance. And hope he can't get us in the next straight. He's undoubtedly quicker than us. But he's now getting some dirty air. Yeah. yeah, he's all over us. Look, he's going to get us. Nothing we can do. He's just so much quicker in the middle sector. We are going to go up to attack ERS just because... Actually, we're not. That's a bad decision. He's gone to attack ERS. We're actually going to turn it back down again. He look, he's done his, his down by the looks of it. He's got hard tyres. I reckon hard tyres are the right choice in this race. I think that's the key difference here. He's got better tyre wear and better tyre temperatures. He's impatient and smart here. He knows he's much quicker in the middle sector. So he doesn't want to let me potentially get back past him before that middle sector starts. Oh, I'm going deep. So he's going to attack here. I'm going to go up to attack ERS mode. Just going to try something here. But he's so close. He's going to get so much slipstream and DRS. I think he's going to fly past us, unfortunately. Hard tyres were the right choice for this race, it seems. How oh, are our tyre temps doing? Yeah, one, two, five. They're hovering around there, but I think that is a bit hot. Okay, he's not gaining much on us because we've used attack DRS mode. Oh, these tyres are really second-hand now. He's all over us. He could get into here if he chooses to do so. I'm going to defend, though. He sent it. That's going to work, I think. He's just got so much more grip than me. Let's try to stick with him here, though. Maybe we can get him straight back. You never know. We're in attacking rest mode. That's all we can do. This is everything we got. How much charge has he got? we got 70% battery. We're looking pretty good in terms of charge. How much charge has he got? We're not gaining much at the moment. The RS is open. This is everything we got. We're gaining. Is it going to be enough? Huge overspeed. Oh my word. This is some proper racing now. He's got much more grip than us. Remember, he could send it around the outside if he wants to, probably. We're back up into P4 though. Come on, let's hold it. I'm staying in the attack ERS mode. I might regret that. But let's stay in the attack ERS mode. See what we can do. Come on. Let's get this P4. Pushing as hard as his tyres will allow. He's getting some dirty air from us now. We have got attack ERS mode still. We've got 30% charge. Is that enough to get us to the end of this straight? I don't know if it is. It's going down pretty quick. He's going to get some slipstream. We've only four tenths back. What an end to this race we're having. We're burning out ERS. Five tenths. He's run out of ERS. He's got less than us, I think. Or he's in a lower mode than us. Come on, one more corner. One more corner. He's got even deeper than us. We're okay. We survived. P4. Let's go. What a race. What a race. I love this car. I absolutely adore this car. What a race we've just had there. So there it was then. That was my spotlight on the brand new Mercedes F1 car in iRacing. What a car it is. Honestly, I cannot praise it highly enough. I'm going to be racing a lot of this car. If you want to see more of that live, do go and follow me over on Facebook Gaming for some live streams because I am, I'm honestly going to race this so much. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable car. Hopefully it gave you some good insight as well to how it compares to F1 2021. Do let me know what you thought of this video, of the car, of the comparison down in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe if you do and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.